Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Alright, in today's video, I'm actually going to be doing three logs. The first one I'm going to do, oh, I'm just going to mill it into one by fours for the customer to finish that order up. Now, the one thing you see me doing right there is I was just resetting the outriggers on the far end of the mill. These mills get bounced around a lot, and so, you know, whether you got the fine-tune adjust or the regular ones like I have, those outriggers can get a little bit loose, and so it's good to shim them up. So, that's all I was doing there. Now, we get this log up, and this one, as I mentioned, we're going to be milling this into one by fours. It's just going to finish off the order for the customer, and I know in a previous video I mentioned that we'd already gotten more than the 2,000 linear feet that they were looking for, but they decided, you know what, we got so many logs here, that's the main thing we want. Let's go ahead, let's mill some more one by four. So we're going to do that with this log. And then the next two logs, you're going to see something, especially in the last log, you're going to want to see this. You're going to see something that I don't do. In fact, that I say, don't do this. <laughs> so stick around because I'm telling you, that one you're going to want to see. You've, you've never seen me do this before. It'll be a first, but it is something that sometimes I do even though I generally advise against it. So, stick around for that. Now, the second log, there's going to be something else that I'm going to do there. It's not like revolutionary or anything else, but you might find it interesting. So, this log, we're jumping right into it here. I've got my slab cut. We take a flitch cut off. I'm going to roll it up 90 degrees. Pay attention to that. Think about that. Watch what happens later. There's a hint for you. So, I get it rolled up 90 degrees. We're going to slab cut it. And one of the things, when you are running a sawmill like this, you want to try to target your cant size on your first cut. Now, I will admit that for the most part, I tend to do that on my third cut, not my first. But you really should do it on your first cut. So, you know, you get the log up, you center the pith, you should be really thinking about what size cant you're going to make. I'm doing that. But generally, my rule of thumb has always been open up the log, get that first cap cut off the deck, and make sure you've got a good opening face. Now, a good opening face would be any face that is at least four inches wide all the way down, because you can make a one by four out of that. So you cut that flitch off, now you got a one by four or a two by or whatever you want. So that's what I mean by a good opening face. I want a full face that is at least four inches, maybe six, all the way down. Now, of course, <laughs> sometimes you run out of water, and so I had to pull the water out and get filled up again. Then. And I use water with pine saw. <laughs> I kind of joke, it's two glug glugs of pine saw. I got that from Magic Man of course before. But in essence, it's about a half a cup, or three quarters of a cup of pine saw, and a really healthy spurt of Dawn dish liquid. That's all I use. I know a lot of guys use diesel drip and things like that. I've just never found that I needed to, and I cut a lot of pine. I mean, <laughs> most of what I cut is probably pine. And yes, pine can build up on the band, but if you just pour the water loop to it, you know what? It cleans it up. Here we go. Once we got that cant built where we wanted it, we're going to have to split it. And once we get it split, and it looks like it split right there, it really isn't. That's just a line across the face of the log. So we're going to get it split so that we can mill two one by fours at the same time. And you'll notice I was above the pith right there. I always talk about not hitting the pith. You just don't want to split the pith on the log. It's very inferior. It's not even really wood, and the, and the young wood around it is weak wood. And so you want to try to capture that in one piece of wood, one board. That's something that I'm always trying to do, but hey, young human, I've, I've failed to do it occasionally. <laughs> it happens that you're going to lose a board too when you do that. But if you really want to get the best and the most you can out of a log, you want to avoid doing that. And isn't that gorgeous looking stuff right there? I love Ponderosa Pine. It is beautiful stuff. All right, we're getting this one knocked down. We're going to get this one off the deck. And, you know, it, it's every job is different. Every time I go out on a new job, it's always different. And occasionally I get comments about the preparation of the logs or the off bearing or whatever. And when every job you go to, with the rare exception of repeat jobs, when every job you go to is a new customer, you always got to train them and get them to understand how things should go and all that kind of stuff. Now, there, I was just kind of hand flipping those cans over. I thought, man, maybe there's a little stress in there. We'll just flip them over and then mill the other side, and that way 
so you can kind of alleviate that a little bit and that's gorgeous stuff so we just knock that one down get those one by fours off the deck then we're going to get this next one loaded up and in this next log well i'm going to do something and it's something that you're going to do if you're a sawyer and if you're not uh, i'll just kind of explain it whenever i make that first cap cut sometimes we cut too deep and i'm going to show you what i do when i cut too deep on a cap cut meanwhile you saw me pull those swing out bunks out of the way i've mentioned it before you don't want those out when you load a log so you swing them out of the way and then swing them back in if you need to. Now you can see this log was a little bit further down the deck. So I kind of swing the bunk out just so that I can use it to measure where the pith is. And, and I've seen guys ask a lot, you know, should the pith be level? How should it be? There are a couple rules of thumb here. The basic standard practice is to make sure that the, the pith is the same height on both ends of the deck. So if it's 10 inches off the deck near you, it should be 10 inches off the deck on the far end. And that's what those roller tow boards are for. If you don't have those, you can use jacks or shims or that kind of stuff. But once you get the, the pith centered and your you mill down to a cap, that means that you're always milling boards parallel to the heart. That's good, except there are times when it's actually better to mill parallel to the surface or the bark of the wood usually that's done in hardwoods i actually don't do it but i do know that there there are some guys that do it particularly on hardwoods to get the absolute best they can out of it and what they do is where the heart is that's going to be your tapered board you're going to leave your tow board rollers up mill down the top and then flip the log over mill down the other side and you're going to end up with a wedge in the very center you're going to throw that out but i don't do that here this is soft wood so we center the pit we let it rock and roll cut this into a cat and start milling it down And again, you can see I'm cutting pretty deep on these. Now, normally I'm always trying to sneak out as much as I can out of every log. See how deep that is? That's very deep. But the customer was already well past what they wanted. And a lot of the logs that they had, they hadn't really had any plans for. In fact, they were thinking they might just cut them in the firewood or something. And then the, the gal here had actually watched my YouTube channel and realized, hey, we could take these logs and instead of just bucking them into firewood, and they had to, the logs were because they had to clear an area out and do forest fire protection and all that kind of stuff. So they had a bunch of logs and realized we can make lumber out of them for our barn dominion build. So why not, right? So that's one of the great things about this here. Now on this one, you'll notice I'm not cutting one by fours. I'm cutting two by fours. We, we're done. We really don't need any more two by or one by fours. So we're just going to cut two by fours and get this one off the deck as quick as we can. You will, <laughs> you know, if you plan your cant from the start, then you don't have to do what I did right there. But one of the things that I always try to do is make sure that if my pith is not going to be centered in one of my two by fours as much as possible, then I will go ahead and I will make my cant off it'll be odd basically I'll, I'll, I'll make sure i got a, another one by in there that i can take out and, and i may take that out before i get to the heart or i may take it out after in this case i took it out after and that's just to give me that little bit of extra room so that i can avoid hitting the pit so in that case you saw i came down chunk 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 down all two by fours and took a one by out of the bottom that's just to make sure that pit was in one piece now notice i just loaded that cap right back up on the mill I really cut it too deep and I hate to waste wood. I really do. You're gonna mill up a log. I try to geek out every board I can. So I went ahead and loaded that one right back up on the deck. And you know what? I made a live edge one by out of it. Why not, right? They could use it for shelving or signs or something else instead of just burning the whole thing. You know, like they're gonna get a cap cut out of the deal. And that's okay, that's good firewood. But that one by, that's just one extra piece of lumber that I was able to get out of that log that you might not have got otherwise. So now, here we go. 
<laughs> if you've waited to see the thing that I don't do, that I'm going to do in this video, <laughs> now's your chance. So first, we got to get this log loaded up. This is a big log, and the customer wanted two by tens out of it, and as many as I could get. So I kind of looked at the log, and I said, "Well, we got a bit of a bend in there. I could mill that out." Um, boy, the, the small end was really small. It was going to be a challenge to get two by tens out of it, and I knew that, well, you've heard me say it before, discretion is the better part of valor, right? So I knew that one, I needed to set this log up right from the start, and rather than do what I normally do, which is take the cap cut, maybe take a flitch to get myself situated just right, and then, and then roll it 90 degrees, I thought, you know, I'm gonna take that first cap cut, see what it looks like on the far end, See, you know, I gotta mill it down to the point that I know I've got a full two, three, four, two by tens worth of lumber out of it. This is one side of the width of the cap. So I went ahead, I took the cap cut, I kind of looked at where I was at and I said, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper and then take a flitch cut out make sure I got enough face to make my two buys and notice what I did right there I flipped it 180 degrees yes folks <laughs> you've seen it on the old jarhead sawdust road show I actually rolled the log 180 degrees which is something that I almost never do and the reason I did that is because I knew I really needed to get as many two by tens out of it as possible they did not want anything smaller than that and this log on the small end was was going to be really tight really close to get that in there so i flipped it 180 degrees took a couple cuts and you know what i ran into nails <laughs> that happens these logs are out in the middle of nowhere they really shouldn't have had any sometimes you run into this somebody probably pounded in a fence or something or signs or something into it the bark and everything grew around it you don't see the nails so there goes a band pull those nails out, change out the band, get a new band on and away you go. So again, yep, I actually flipped it 180 degrees. The reason I did that is I wanted to make sure that when I finish the second side, which I'm gonna do as soon as I get this blade tightened up and back on the mill and everything, I was gonna take it to 10 inches and then mill her down. And that way I could be certain that I'm going to have a full 10 degree width on my can as I work this one down. You'll notice I still got quite a bit of round edge on either side. That's okay because now I'm going to flip it up 90 degrees, make sure it's flat into those side supports like I would do any other time, and then take that top cap cut off and work this side down so that I get rid of the rain as much as possible, but I'm also now trying to target a specific height. If you're making two by tens that are going to be actually two inches by 10 inches, I think in this case we went with an inch and seven eighths by 10 inches. That's what I call milling on the even. I'm gonna set my simple set at two inches instead of two and an eight and mill it down. They didn't really need actual two inch lumber, but they really didn't want you know, inch and a half dimensional either. So they, they wanted them thick, but they didn't need them a full two inches. So we set it that way. That means that instead of having a cant that's say uh, 12 inches tall or whatever, right? You, you can mill it an eighth of an inch under so that as you come down, you're gonna end up at an inch and a seven inch off the deck. That's the key when doing this. Now you'll notice I took some, some thinner stuff out of there. That was just to work down so I could get to where I really didn't have any wing or very, very little wing. And then as I'm working down, notice that I took a one inch board out of the middle there. That was so I could box in the heart on my next one. I didn't want to drop two inches right there and, and split the heart. So I took it down an inch instead, took that one by 10 out of there, dropped it two, and now I can take a two by out and then finish the bottom off at one inch as well. Away you go, you took it down, you can get it off the deck, you get the job done. So, 
there you have it folks yep i flipped it 180 degrees hope you guys enjoyed the video i appreciate you watching y'all have a great weekend i'm gonna drop a video right here for you to check out the old jarhead out